The night sky is filled with stars as far as the eye can see. From our perspective on Earth, they might seem just tiny specks of light, but all of them are different, unique. Stars have many colours, sizes, temperatures and radiance. They can range from smaller than some planets to bigger than Saturn's orbit. They can shine in different colours. Some live just a few million years, others might last way longer than the current age of the universe. Some die with a whimper, others with a bang. Astronomers have been observing and cataloguing stars for millennia, and the 20th century saw the construction of massive telescopes to study them. We know a lot more about how stars work today than we did a few generations ago. Enough to understand how they form, how they live and how they die. Not all stars are created equal, and in fact, they are so distinct that each type will warrant a video on their own. But today we'll explore the basics of a star, what goes on inside them, and some of the types out there. Get ready to dive into some of the most extreme and weird environments in the universe. This is the Hertzsprung-Russell diagram, one of the primary ways astronomers classify stars. It compares them based on luminosity and surface temperature. Hotter stars are bluish, while colder ones have redder colours. Our Sun is right in the middle, being known as the Yellow Dwarf, more specifically, a G2V type star. A typical star like our Sun spends most of its life in the main sequence. Main sequence stars are giant balls of hydrogen, squeezed so tight by their own gravity that the pressure on their cores is enough to fuse said hydrogen into heavier elements. This nuclear fusion process is exothermic, which means it releases energy. It's what powers the star and counteracts gravity's pressure on the core from just collapsing into nothingness. Stars live constantly in this fragile balance between the crushing pressure of gravity and the outwards pressure of nuclear fusion and it's their overall mass that determines everything about them. The more mass a star has, the more pressure its core will be put under by that mass. To counteract the increased gravity and maintain balance, more massive stars have to burn hotter, which makes them spend more energy and ultimately burn faster. That's why larger stars live shorter lives. They simply run out of fuel before their smaller stellar cousins, even though they have more of it. A star twice as massive as our Sun, like Sirius A, the brightest star in the night sky, has the surface temperature of almost double, at 9,940 Kelvin, and it shines 25 times brighter. All that increased energy output makes Sirius A spend its nuclear fuel a lot faster, its lifespan being just about a quarter of the Sun's. Stars more massive than that can have a surface temperature of more than 20,000 Kelvin, and will live for just a few million years. But running out of hydrogen doesn't always mean the end. For a lot of stars, it's just a transition into a new phase. As the star gets older and its supply of hydrogen in the core runs out, the outwards pressure of hydrogen fusion ceases and it can no longer hold the grip of gravity at bay. The star is no longer in equilibrium, and begins to collapse on itself. If it has enough mass, however, this further increase in pressure can eventually heat up its core and surrounding layers to high enough temperatures, allowing fusion to begin once more. First, as the star gets smaller, a thin shell outside the dead core becomes hot enough to fuse hydrogen for the first time. Meanwhile, the core, although unable to fuse helium just yet, continues to generate energy by gravitational contraction. These processes are more intense than during core hydrogen fusion of the main sequence phase, generating extra outwards pressure and causing the star's outer layers to swell by several times. The star has officially left the main sequence and moved into red giant territory. It is now dying. Red giants are bigger, but not more massive than they were as main sequence stars. As stated, their increase in volume is due to the larger outwards pressure of a hotter core and surrounding layers. Our Sun, for example, 
will have similar mass as a red giant compared to what it has today, but will be able to grow to more than 100 times its current size. Besides the size, another significant side effect of this stage is a colder surface, as the star's outer layers are less dense and further away from the heat of the core. That usually turns them red, as red light has less energy than blue or white. At some point, the shrinking core will reach approximately 100 million Kelvin, starting helium fusion. The star will get a little smaller as density and temperature increase, but it will still remain several times larger than its main sequence version. Yet those changes aren't a salvation as much as a delay. Both hydrogen shell fusion and helium core fusion require a lot more heat to burn than the original main sequence nuclear fusion, and this means they'll burn much faster. A star like our Sun lives 10 billion years in the main sequence, but only 1 billion as a red giant. Once all the helium in its core has been fused into carbon and oxygen, the star will contract once more. This will eventually create another shell fusion phase, this time as a helium shell outside the core becomes hot enough to fuse, further swelling the star's outer layers. And that's where the Sun stops. It'll spend around a billion years in this red giant stage, but when helium shell fusion is finished, it won't have enough mass left to burn further elements. It'll begin collapsing again, irreversibly this time, and shed its outer layers, ultimately turning into a dim white dwarf. A cold stellar corpse held together by electron degenerate matter, slowly losing its remaining heat to space. But some can go further. More massive stars create enough pressure to keep heating up their cores and fusing heavier and heavier elements in faster shell core fusion cycles, until they get to iron, that is. Due to its atomic makeup, iron is extremely stable and unlike the elements that came before it, fusing it is an endothermic process, which means it consumes energy instead of releasing it. When a stellar core reaches iron, there's no going further. It can't be fused, and even electron pressure can't save the star now. The iron core violently and instantly shrinks from the size of a planet to a mere few kilometres as the layers surrounding it follow suit. The implosion of these outer layers rebounds out of the core producing a supernova, an explosion so bright it outshines an entire galaxy. What's left of the star is either a neutron star or a black hole, depending on the core's mass. Less than 5% of stars are massive enough to end in a supernova, and even middle-sized stars like our Sun account for less than 30% of the overall number of stars. At the polar opposite of size, mass and violence, there's another type of star that's more abundant than any other. Red dwarfs and they have their quirks too. Red dwarfs are a special type of main sequence star. They are the smallest stars and that makes them extremely abundant and long-lasting. Astronomers estimate red dwarfs amount to 70% of all the stars in the universe and can live for trillions of years, which means not a single one has burned out since the universe began. They live China our sun, and all the other stars along with it. Unlike their bigger cousins, that accumulate all their helium in their core due to the increased gravity, red dwarfs are fully connective. That means their helium and hydrogen are constantly mixing, reducing pressure and slowing down the rate at which they burn their fuel. Unfortunately, even small, dim and extremely efficient stars like red dwarfs must one day die too, and their deaths will be unlike anything else. A red dwarf won't have a shell fusion phase, the star will simply continue to burn all of its hydrogen until there's none left, and when fusion ceases, there won't be enough mass to even ignite helium fusion in its core. Instead of going through a red giant phase, it'll just quietly increase its surface temperature, radiating energy faster in order to maintain equilibrium. This last stage in a red dwarf's life is called blue dwarf, because its colour will change as the surface temperature increases. Since red dwarfs live for trillions of years, Astronomers estimate there are currently no blue dwarfs in the universe. In the end, it'll turn into a white dwarf, but not through a violent process like our sun. Due to their abundance and lifespan, red dwarfs are the most likely candidates for humanity's future home after our sun inevitably dies. Yet they aren't without their perils, and colonising a red dwarf system will have a number of new challenges our civilization will have to overcome. But that's a subject for a future video. 
There are many types of stars, and even the same one can look vastly different depending on how far along it is in its lifespan, which makes them hard to study and classify. We hope to have provided here a simple and interesting introduction to their properties, and we'll come back in the future to dive deeper into each one, as well as explaining objects like neutron stars and white dwarfs that may look like regular stars but behave in totally distinct manners. When we look at the stars in the night sky, we may think they're all the same. The truth, however, is exactly the opposite. Thanks for joining us this week in Access Astronomy. We hope to see you here next week as we continue to explore our strange and vast universe.